See what's happening right now. This is the Appalachian Weekly News on App TV. An update on new take-home COVID tests and where to find them. The historic top general store is lost to a fire. And Boone PD is investigating a string of local thefts. And we learn a little more about a professor who formed a COVID-19 cooking group. All of this and more on this week's edition of the Appalachian Weekly News. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on this Friday, March 5th. Live from the Beasley Media Complex in Boone, this is the Appalachian Weekly News. I'm Katie Garceron. And I'm Hadassah Rivera. We have the latest update on COVID-19 news around the high country. As of March 5th, there are 42 active cases in two active clusters. App State has been approved as a vaccine site by the state. And anyone who is eligible to receive the vaccine in Group 3 can get vaccinated starting March 10th. North Carolinians can expect fewer COVID-19 restrictions after Governor Roy Cooper lifted the statewide curfew. According to Executive Order 195, bars, taverns, and restaurants can serve alcohol until 11 o'clock in the evening. Bars and taverns can open up to 30% capacity, while restaurants, breweries, and wineries can open at 50%. Indoor amusement parks, movie theaters, and indoor sports arenas can also open at 30% capacity. Quote, we're depending on people to be responsible. The mask mandate will not change. As more people gather together, it will be more important than ever to social distance, unquote. At-home COVID tests are ready for pickup over the counter or at retail stores without a prescription. The CDC advises people to wash their hands before taking the test and read the instructions carefully. Some tests need a nasal swab, while others need a saliva sample. For tips regarding the test, check out the CDC's website. Once the test is done, send the sample to the testing facility for that manufacturer. The CDC encourages people to contact their health provider regardless of the result. You know, Katie, if you don't have a car, how would you get to a vaccination site? Our correspondent, Shannon Pendleton, has the answer for those asking the very same question. site and our need of transportation as of January 31st. Apple Parts are offering free rides to those in the community who need it. According to Craig Cutes, the director of Apple Carts, there are multiple transportation options that can be used to take individuals to the site. It's a combination of bus routes and our demand response uh, service. Um, for those that are in town, they, they could take the, either the red route and it would drop them off at the Watauga um, Rec County Recreation Center. The uh, pink and express routes also go by there. Through different advertising techniques, members of the community have been informed about this service. We've put it out on all of our social media and advertised it on our website and, and it's out word to the press. According to Huge, only a small number of people have used this service, but he hopes more people will start using it soon. We did provide trips for 13 individuals to the vaccination site. We're just hoping that any people as need transportation will take advantage of it so that they can get that vaccine. Remember, if you need transportation to your scheduled vaccination appointment, you can call Apple Cars and Dispatch office at 828 297 1300. For the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Shannon Pendleton. A community landmark is lost after the historic Todd General Store went up in flames on Thursday, February 25th. Founded in 1914, the store entered new ownership in May of 2019 and was officially reopened in the summer of 2020 by the Connell family. Matt Connell, one of the owners of the store, says the fire is not the end, but one of the chapters of the Todd General Store's story. The cause of the fire has yet to be identified, and we will have an update on this story on Monday. Nine months into their 36-month deadline, the Blacklet App State Collective reported significant progress with university administration on their demands for change. At their most recent meeting, the collective proposed a website with a public demand tracker. This would display progress towards all of Blacklet App State's demands and it include a frequently asked questions page. Christian Martin, a member of the collective, says, quote, The collective has and will continue to amplify black and brown voices with or without the support of the administration. 
We have made progress since our first meeting on July 21st, but there is still work to be done, unquote. Virginia Roseman is the newest member of the Boontown Council. She filled the spot Loretta Clausen formerly held. Roseman says a lot of her activism work was inspired by Clausen when the two worked together previously. One time Loretta and I were walking and I turned around and I looked at her and she goes, what's your long-term goal? I said to have your position before I started getting active. I started figuring out how to be part, a, better, a better part of my community. She wants to improve travel in town during all hours of the day. Roseman will serve on the council until November when elections are held. She hasn't revealed yet if she will be running again for the seat permanently. The town of Boone is setting aside a 30-acre parcel of land along the New River. The town hopes this will increase the wildlife habitats, promote cleaner water, and prevent downstream flooding. The remaining acreage is the future site of a facility for police, town planning, public works, and a new fire station for the town of Boone. The goal is a completely carbon neutral facility and to accomplish this, the town is exploring options such as geothermal energy and solar power. According to federal documents, two former App State students pled guilty after participating in a $1.5 million drug ring. Kyle Beckner pleaded guilty to one count of distributing LSD, carrying a maximum sentence of 20 years. Devin McDonald pleaded guilty to conspiracy to distribute mixed substances containing cocaine, carrying a maximum sentence of 40 years. McDonald was a member of the Delta Chi fraternity. According to the university, the frat is currently on probation after violating Roy Cooper's stay-at-home order by having a party. On February 23rd, the Boone Police Department responded to two reports of theft at retail establishments. According to Boone PD, two men in their 20s are suspected of stealing more than $700 worth of merchandise from Mass General Store. The same two men are also suspected of theft from Cheap Joe's Art Supply. The two the two suspects were captured on surveillance footage, last seen leaving the West King Street area in a white Kia sedan. Anyone with information can call Crime Stoppers at 828-268-6959 or the Boone Police Department at 828-268-6900. The town of Boone is asking for the community's help after 23 street signs have been stolen. According to a press release from the Boone Police Department, the signs were stolen from neighborhoods around Highland Avenue, Yosef Drive, Windy Drive, and Stadium Drive. It will cost the town of Boone $920 to replace the missing signs. Anyone with any information is encouraged to contact Boone PD. Being in stuck inside during the pandemic can really take a toll on people and their relationships. It's true. Our correspondent Grace Smith tells us more about knowing the red flags in the days of quarantine. This pandemic has brought forth many interesting challenges in everyday life, but how is it affecting our relationships? According to some studies, abuse and signs of abuse have skyrocketed during this pandemic. Sarah Crouch is the outreach coordinator for Oasis in Boone. Over an email, she listed a few signs of abuse that people should look out for. Crouch said, quote, It is important to understand that it's unlikely that a relationship that was healthy before the pandemic began has turned abusive during this pandemic. However, in times of stress and uncertainty, abusive behaviors can increase or escalate." Unquote. The first sign of abuse Crouch mentioned was if people are withdrawing from friends. People with abusive behaviors will attempt to isolate their partners from seeing other people. Other signs Crouch mentioned are changes in self-esteem, when someone is unable to be away from their partner, extreme jealousy, and not having control over their own finances. Crouch says to be on the lookout for social media posts that seem concerning. Also to be on the lookout for bruises or other noticeable injuries. The Canadian Women's Foundation started a secret hand sign that survivors of abuse can use to ask for help. Hold up your hand and tuck your thumb in. Then wrap your other fingers around your thumb to make a fist. The person receiving this hand symbol will then know to intervene and get help. Oasis offers a variety of ways for victims of abuse to get out of dangerous situations. Our services include 24-7 crisis lines. We offer a free and confidential emergency shelter. We offer case management to our clients who are in shelter with us or in our housing programs. We offer judicial systems advocacy. In addition to that judicial systems advocacy piece, we also offer referrals to legal aid of North Carolina. Oasis has 24-7 crisis lines that operate in English and in Spanish. If you or someone you know is struggling with abuse, you can call 
828-262-5035. Again, that is 828-262-5035. For the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Grace Smith. Finally, after weeks of rain, the sun has been peeking through this week, and I am so stoked, Tadasa. Hopefully, it'll stick around for the next couple of days. Grace, what's it looking like? Well, we've seen some beautiful weather recently, and luckily, it is going to stick around this week. Today, we'll see mainly sunny skies, with the exception of a few clouds coming in this afternoon. Temperatures will be in the lower 40s with some light winds, but as we move into the evening, temperatures will drop to the mid-20s. As we begin the weekend, across the high country, there will be lots of clouds in the morning. But by the afternoon, we'll see the sun peeking through. What makes it fun? Temperatures it's will range in the upper 30s to mid 40s, and we can expect some light wind throughout the day. By nightfall, we'll see mainly clear skies, and temperatures will dip into the mid 20s. We'll see some warmer temperatures and brighter skies as we get closer to the upcoming spring season. So take some time to get outside this upcoming week and soak up some sun. Early next week, we'll see sunny skies and temperatures ranging from the upper 40s to upper 50s. To close out the week, we can expect to see some occasional showers and temperatures in the upper 50s to low 60s. That's it for weather this week. Katie, Hadassah, how have you guys been enjoying this warmer weather? I'm actually really happy I got to hit the parkway the other day. How about you, Hadassah? I think I might be heading there this weekend. Because of the pandemic, many people are stuck inside looking for new recipes to cook. Two App State professors noticed this and created a Facebook group called CookVid, where people can ask for suggestions and tips when cooking. The group has around 9,200 members from around the world. Jack Kwong and Peter Fawcett started the group and share a passion for food and helping the community. What makes it fun is, is the sharing. Uh, and I think that ultimately is the, it was also the spirit behind, behind CookVid. Sometimes, um, you know, a, a dish is meaningful, right? And that adds a adds a additional layer to to the eating uh, experience. Fundraisers that raised more than ten thousand dollars for local organizations like the community clinic. So one thing we wanted to do for sure was to do the best we could at having a positive group, and we we haven't had to do a whole lot to keep it that way. That's one of the nice things is. Um, it's just our group members are, ha it's, it's like a community and we're happy to help each other out. If you're thinking of switching up your taste buds, look them up on Facebook by searching CookVid19. Village Pharmacy, a mainstay in the Blowing Rock community, officially relocated to Tanger Outlets last week. Along with the new location, the pharmacy added more gift shopping options to fit in better with neighboring shops at the outlets. The full-service pharmacy provides free delivery for Watauga County along with curbside pickup. Um, the grand opening was really fun. Um, we had the Chamber of Commerce and the mayor come out. Um, being in this area seems great for both community um, as well as um, uh, the people that come to visit for the weekends as well. Village Pharmacy is open from 9 to 6 Monday through Friday and from 9 to noon on Saturday. If you're driving through Avery County, you might notice the colorful quilting squares on buildings. The Town of Beach Mountain's Tourism and Economic Development Department has recreated the trail with help from local artists and organizations. People can now drive on the trail and see the quilted works of art while reading about their significance to Appalachian heritage. It's a symbol of our cultural heritage. You know, quilt making has long been a really key component of just being able to survive in rural Appalachia. But it's also um, indicative of the real strong artisan network that we've got up here in the area. And beyond that, it's, it's a treasure hunt. Who doesn't love a treasure hunt? You know, so it can just be a fun afternoon outing. If you're looking for a day filled with art and history, learn more about the trail at www.averycountyquilttrail.com. With the terms coming up, I'm looking for a way to de-stress. I think our correspondent Shaheem Stafford has a pretty interesting way you can do that. After long days of hard work and countless hours being put in, your mind and body needs to de-stress and release all of that built up tension. And right now here at 180 Flow Spa. 180 Flow Spa is locally owned and operated by Angela and Brad Hevener. Their area of expertise, float therapy, allows the mind and body to heal without any distractions of sound, light, and touch. 
During the session, the individual is floating effortlessly inside a tank containing 10 inches of mineral-rich salt water at 93.5 degrees. Now, I spoke with Ms. Heffman about why float therapy is so important. Float therapy offers both mental and physical benefits in one service. So through the use of sensory deprivation, you allow, it allows you to remove outside stimuli, such as light and sound. 180 Float Spa is Boone's first and only locally owned float therapy. Of Appalachian, and we decided this is where we wanted to call home. So we have been in the community, and once we tried float therapy, we decided this is something that we wanted to offer to our community members. And then, of course, we did our market research, and that showed that this was a viable business here, and that's because residents of Boone really do prioritize their health, well-being, um, and taking care of yourself and so you doing self-care to make sure we all stay healthy. To experience the flood therapy, you can contact Angela and Brad directly at 828-832-8180. And for any updates on their social medias at 180 Flow Spa. Reporting for the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Shaheen Stafford. We're nearing the end of basketball season here, Katie. Yeah, how are things finishing up, Connor? Yes, that's exactly right. We're just about done with, with uh, basketball season. And last weekend, App State men's basketball traveled to Georgia Southern in the team's last two-game series of the regular season. Now the first matchup was a thriller. It looked like Georgia Southern would run away with this game after taking a 22 point lead, but the Mountaineers had other plans. Justin Forrest and Adrian Delph dropped 24 points each to defeat the Eagles 84 to 78 in double overtime. In the second matchup, the Mountaineers didn't have as much luck as Georgia Southern won 65 to 57. With the loss, App State finishes 13 and 11 overall, losing six of, the, of their last seven games. Now, the team is getting ready to take on Little Rock tonight at 8.30 in the first round of the Sunbelt Conference Tournament. App State women's basketball hosted Georgia Southern last week in a two-game series. This was senior day for five players, and they did not disappoint in their last home games as Mountaineers. App State won both games behind strong performances from Laney Gosnell. In the first game, Gosnell scored 18 points en route to a 77-66 win. In the second game, she had 23 points to lead App State to an 81 to 78 victory. She was outstanding. Um, we barely took her out because we kept getting in foul, foul trouble. And she did everything. She played the four. When we needed a big three, she hit a big three. When we needed something around the rim, when we needed the offensive rebound, she was coming out of everywhere. The team finished the regular season at 13 and 11 and played in the first round of the Sunbelt Conference Tournament earlier today. App State won by a score of 70 to 60. Gosnell once again led the way with 14 points. The team now takes on UTA tomorrow at 11.30 in the second round. On Sunday, App State Wrestling hosted the Southern Conference Tournament, and I heard the Mountaineers performed well. Let's go to our correspondent, Miles Greer, with the inside scoop on how the tournament went. I'm standing outside the Holmes Convocation Center where Appalachian State hosted the Southern Conference Wrestling Championship. Appalachian State finished second overall with a team score of 87 points, right behind Campbell University with 92 points. App State put six wrestlers into the finals out of ten weight classes, where five of them became champions. I talked with one of those champions, Jonathan Milner, about his thoughts on the day and where himself and the team finished. I'm here with Jonathan Milner, 149 pounder for App State, SOCON champion. How do you feel today, man? Uh, I feel good. Just uh, I'm disappointed that we didn't get the team title. You know, we had five, which um, five champs, which is really good. You know, going in there with your team, battling out, it always makes it a little bit easier, a little bit more fun to just win and compete hard. Man, that's fantastic. What was going through your mind in your finals match as you were getting there? Uh, I just knew that I just had to stay in position and, you know, just wrestle my match. And if I did that, there was no way I could lose. You know, just staying confident, staying calm, you know, just, you know, doing what we do every day and not having any pressure, just having fun and doing it for the team at the end of the day, getting the job done. Awesome, man. Is there anything you're looking to the future when you're going to the NCAAs? Uh, just to win it, uh, All-American, you know, do the best you can. And hopefully we get seven guys, we get – Two at large bids for Will and Thomas, and then we have a big group of guys go, you know, break another program record. All right, man, I appreciate your time.
to keep up with these Mountaineers as they climb the podium at Nationals in St. Louis. Then you can follow their social media on Instagram, Twitter, or even Facebook at App Wrestling. Again, that's at A-P-P-W-R-E-S-T-L-I-N-G on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. For the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Miles Greer. Last weekend, App State softball traveled to UNC Wilmington to play four games against the Seahawks. The Mountaineers won three of the four games, winning the first game 3-2 and the second 5-4. The team lost the third matchup 2-5 before winning the fourth game 7-1. App State sits at 6-4 overall on the season. The Mountaineers have one more doubleheader against East Tennessee State on March 9th before beginning conference play. App State women's tennis took on Elon on Wednesday afternoon. The Mountaineers lost a hard-fought match by a score of 4-2. The team now stands at 1-5 on the season. Now, App State prepares for its first Sun Belt matchups against Georgia State tomorrow and Georgia Southern on Sunday. As COVID-19 regulations start to loosen up a little bit, attendance at spring sporting events remains uncertain. Our correspondent, Allie Powell, has the story. A busy season for App State spring sports is underway, and fan attendance for games and competitions is constantly changing. The health and well-being of student athletes, coaches, staff, and fans is of the utmost importance to the App State Athletic Program. Last week, only two immediate family members were allowed to attend for each athlete along with staff and faculty. The public was not allowed to attend. Athletic Director Doug Gillen shares about upcoming changes to potentially allow more people to attend events. With the order, we'll try to um, accommodate uh, exactly what the order suggests, which is 15%. Um, with social distancing, when we look at our facilities, we'll look at how we can social distance. We'll look at different parts of the stadium where we can social distance to try to maximize attendance um, per the governor's orders. North Carolina Executive Order Number 195 went into effect this week. The new order permits up to 30% capacity for outdoor venues and 15% for indoor venues. Even with an updated order, the previous requirements of remaining six feet apart and wearing masks are still in force. This past weekend, the new regulations were put into motion at women's basketball, baseball, and wrestling events. Associate Athletic Director Spencer Bridges comments on how things went with the new attendance requirements. Well, we're working to be very creative within the confines and within the role of the executive order to how do we get a few more bodies in, in this facility above and beyond uh, the player parents. Um, so it's working with past lists from both teams and then obviously season ticket holders will be the next conversation on how do we accommodate a few students within the confines of our restricted area. It is very exciting to have App State Spring Sports back in action with a limited number of fans being able to cheer them on in person. For the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Allie Powell. And that's all for sports this week. Hadassah, Katie, keep an eye out on our basketball teams as they try to make a run in the conference tournament. We'll definitely make sure to do that, Connor. And now it's time for your High Country High Note. A dog at the Watauga Humane Society is on her way to a new healthy life. Apache was found by rescuers in Avery County after a social media post showing her condition was seen by local animal lovers. We're going to show you a few pictures of Apache, but we want to note that some of these images may be hard to see. According to a post by the Watauga Humane Society, Apache was taken to the animal hospital of Boone where she received treatment for her injuries. Danielle Deschamps is a volunteer at the Watauga Humane Society. Deschamps says that Apache is doing well and is already starting to put on weight. Apache currently is not listed for adoption. If you want to help other dogs at the Humane Society, Deschamps says that there is a desperate need for volunteers to come walk dogs. You can make an appointment to visit the Humane Society by calling 828 Two six four seven eight six five, And that's our report this week. I'm Katie Garceron. And I'm Hadassah Rivera. For all of us at the Appalachian Weekly News, thank you for watching. And just to let you know, we will be on break next week, so we will see you again on March 19th.